In this video, we're going to talk about how to create the perfect SEO article. Now, business owners all around the world are completely obsessed with SEO. And it's kind of for good reason, because Google has become the proverbial velvet rope for everything that the web has to offer. I mean, if you're not catering to Google as a search engine, then people just aren't going to be able to find your content. And of course, if they can't find your content, they're never going to be able to take advantage of your actual services and products. So let's talk about what SEO really is. So this is the simplest definition. First of all, stands for search engine optimization, though you will always hear it primarily called SEO. You're also going to hear it more and more called search marketing because it is sort of evolving and turning into a much larger thing than just links, which we'll get into in just a minute or so. But basically, SEO is really all about figuring out how to tell the search engines what your particular site is all about, and in particular, the individual pages of your site. Because if search engines like Google know exactly what your pages are all about, they can then better decide how to rank them. So is that all there is to good SEO, just sort of letting it know? Well, you know, not quite. There's actually a few more things to it. The key to understanding everything about SEO, and this is the most important part, and man, I, I'm embarrassed to actually tell you this, but it's true. It took me a long time to figure this out. It is not that you need to get your site ranked on Google. It's the actual individual pages that you want ranked on Google. And let me show you exactly what I mean here. So I'm just going to go ahead and Google something real quick. Let's just uh, do something simple like, oh, there you go, bicycle sports shop. Sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and Google for bicycle sports shop. So right away, I see bicycle sports shop. That's great. Nice, relevant listing. And you would think that Google is ranking this site because it's ranking the home page. But that's not exactly how all of this is working. What's actually happening is it's ranking all the different pages that are part of this. And I'll go ahead and click here so you can see them. You can see all these different pages here. All these pages. See this? All these different URLs. There's the main URL, but then all these little tiny URLs here. And each one of these pages is ranked in Google talking all about being a bicycle sports shop, which is ultimately giving credence, giving what they call authority to the fact that bicycle sports shop is probably something about bicycles, sports, and something you could buy because it's a shop. And that's why they're ranking so highly. At least it's part of the reason why. Another great reason is because I happen to live in Austin, Texas, and you can see here they are located in Austin, Texas. So that's a big reason why they're particularly ranking on my search results. But you can see what I'm talking about with all these different pages that they have ranking. These are all individually ranked in Google, and then Google sort of pulls it up, sees it's on the home page associates all these other rankings to that homepage, and that's what ranks the quote unquote website. So if you take anything from this particular video at all, remember that each individual page of your site, that's what you focus your SEO efforts on. So you find a particular page and then you build that page, for example, a blog post to make sure that it's going after a particular keyword phrase and that it does that job really, really well. You don't worry about the site overall, just worry about that particular page. The rest will take care of itself. So again, the biggest, biggest lesson you can take over here is rank your pages individually. When you think about SEO, think about individual page rank. Okay, next. Now you should focus, we talked about obviously optimizing individual URLs, and that really is all about getting your pages set up in a certain way. So let's go ahead and give you some hints on how you can do that. The very, very first thing, and we're going to focus on some HTML terms here, but you really don't have to worry about those particular terms. If you know HTML, obviously it's going to make sense to you. But for those of you who use WordPress, and I'm one of those people, WordPress, whenever you put a title, so whether you put the title in a post or if you put the title in a page, whatever that title box is, WordPress automatically makes that an H1 tag. Now, what that means is that's primarily what that particular page is about, or at least it's one of the ways that you can tell search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo what that particular page is about. So why is this important? Because if you're not using relevant keywords, which means, for example, let's say I'm creating a page all about breakfast foods and the best breakfast foods in Austin. And in the title... Instead of breakfast foods and Austin, I don't have that keyword phrase in there, but I put 
let's have some fun today, that's very, very generic. It doesn't help me as much from an SEO perspective because let's have some fun today could mean anything. It could mean, hey, let's go out for this great breakfast or it could mean let's go out to the pool, who knows? So what you wanna do is take advantage of your titles. And again, those are your H1 tags, but the titles in WordPress and make sure that you're putting in a very specific title that's keyword friendly, which means you've got that keyword phrase that you're trying to target. So I might put instead of something generic, like let's go have some fun today. And I wanted to talk about the breakfast foods in Austin. I might say something like the 10 best breakfast foods in Austin. And that gets breakfast foods in Austin into that title tag and will help me with my SEO search. You can also see at the bottom, we've got this little keyword planner tool. That's how you can actually determine what people are searching for. And if there's enough people out there that it makes sense to actually build an article around that. So that will be for a future video. We'll get into some more details of that. But if you are at all interested, or if you're familiar with that particular tool, just Google key, uh, keyword planner tool. It's actually a free tool from Google. And you can go through and type in some keyword phrases and see how many people are searching for them. Let's talk about keywords for a second in terms of what not to do. Now, normally we talk about things that you need to do, but there is a lot of misinformation, especially if you're out there kind of searching the web, because there's a lot of old stuff out there and things that quite frankly, not only do they not work, but they actually will hurt your site if you do them. One of those things is what they call keyword stuffing. And what this came about was because years and years and years ago, and it really was years ago, Google used to just look at the keywords that were on the page and say, oh, well, um, actually it wasn't even the keywords. It was the words, everything that was on the page. And it would say, okay, well, it looks like breakfast foods in Austin is mentioned here a thousand times. And because of that, it must really be about breakfast foods in Austin. Therefore I'm going to rank it higher. So that's what you call keyword stuffing. Now what people were doing is they would just put breakfast foods in Austin in maybe white text in the footer somewhere where nobody would actually see it from a human perspective, but the Google robots would see it and it would trick those robots into thinking the page was more about something than it really was and it would rank it higher and it really was manipulative and it's backfired in a big, big way. So if you've heard about all these horror stories with people over the last year or two who have had their sites really, really hurt by this tactic because they've dropped off the search engine results or they just aren't listed by Google anymore, something called delisting. Uh, if you see that stuff, it's because they're doing techniques like this. So avoid it. Really what you want to do is you want to write your article, your blog post in this case, or if you're doing a regular page and then creating your page so that a normal human can read it and it will make sense to them, that it doesn't seem robotic. You're not writing for the robots. You're writing for humans. So you want to go through, you definitely want to make sure you have the keywords in there, but you don't need to overdo it. Just make it a natural thing. So the very first thing I would do, again, going back to our Austin breakfast example, is I might say, you know, the top 10 breakfast foods in Austin. And then that would be my H1 tag and that main title tag. Next, I would talk about the, maybe in the first paragraph, I might say, you know, having recently moved to Austin, looking for the best breakfast foods was one of my first priorities. Now, what I've done is the words Austin, breakfast, and food is still in that first paragraph. All those keywords are still in there. Yes, they're in a different order, but they're still in there. So we still know that the paragraph was about that. Google will know the paragraph was about that. So now it's gotten two little signs here that the paragraph was about that particular keyword phrase. And it's also written in a way that's very natural. And the other thing you'd want to do is put it once in the body of the article. Normally I'll do that toward the end if it doesn't make sense to put it in the very middle of it. But uh, maybe that last paragraph, you know, so something that says, you know, thanks again for reading this article. I'm really hoping that you go out and enjoy some breakfast foods. Um, and, uh, you know, let me know how you're enjoying it or something like that. You know, I'm making this up as we go here, but you get the, you get the idea. So making sure that those keywords are in there. Next, let's talk about emphasizing important content. So when I'm talking about the top 10 breakfast foods, when I'm going over those 10 unique breakfast foods, maybe the first one would be tacos here in Austin, at least you want to go through and you want to make sure that you're highlighting those aspects. So you can use things like bullet points. You can use the highlighter. You can actually use numbered lists, anything like italics or bold. Those are things that Google's robots, again, these are the robots who are going through and, and scrolling through the content to kind of get an idea of what it's about. They notice that you're putting emphasis on these certain points. Now, that doesn't mean that if you just put an emphasis on Austin breakfast and foods and make it bold, that you're automatically going to rank for that. It has very little to do with it, but it's another 
individual factor. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different things that you need to do to actually get a rank, a really, really good rank. I mean, that's what all the different factors that Google looks at. But these are some of the major easiest things to take advantage of. And that's why we wanted to have them here. So make sure that if you're going through a particular blog post that you're using a bullet list or that you may be using the numbered lists, or again, even using italics and boldface to make sure that you're emphasizing certain content. Let's also talk about links. Now, there are backlinks, and you may have heard of backlinks or backward linking. That's essentially where somebody else, a third-party site, is linking to your site. They're giving you a link back to your site, and they're referencing something on your content. Again, this was a spammy technique used years and years and years ago, and people would basically pay other people to link to them. And for a while, that worked, but that is completely, again, completely backfired. Please don't do that. You want to have natural backlinks, which means you know, you're know you not necessarily out there begging for backlinks. You just provide such great content that people naturally want to share it. That's kind of what you're going for here. Now, in order to help with that is why not pay it forward a little bit? Why not actually link out to other sites? So when you're creating a blog post and maybe it's got a little reference point of where you found a particular fact, you would actually just go back and link to that blog post. It's a really simple way to give somebody else some traffic, give them a little bit of SEO love, and maybe they'll link back to you. Maybe they'll find a reason to link back to you. Um, it, even if they don't, it doesn't matter because you're still linking to relevant content and everything's starting to get connected. You can kind of see this example of all the different dots connecting. When Google realizes that you're linking to other foods about breakfast blogging, or maybe it was just you know, local foods in Austin or something like that, whatever your blog happens to be about. And if you're linking to other blogs that are relevant to you or, or other sites that are relevant, maybe Yelp reviews and things like that, that you're, that you're linking to in that example, it's giving you credibility as an authority on that particular topic. It's yet another thing that Google will look at. And it's a, this is the best part in my opinion. It's not even the fact that you're doing it for Google as much as you're doing it because it's useful for the visitor. So when they're on your site, and you're talking about a certain restaurant and you link to that restaurant, that's useful. Why have them Google? Why, why make them Google it when you can just link to it and then they can open up as a new tab and they can learn about the restaurant because they learned about it from you, which makes you super useful and your site, your information, something that they would want to share. Google will love you if you have people love you. Next, let's talk about building credibility. Now, obviously, all these other steps are all about building credibility, right? They lead up to this idea of having authority. But there actually is something called authorship that you need to take a look at. Now, for WordPress, there's actually plugins that do this, which is fantastic. Uh, if you do some HTML, then you're probably familiar enough with that to do this as well if you haven't already. But there's something you want to look at. It's called authorship. And again, we're going to do a separate video on that a little bit later. For now, it's worth Googling just so you understand what it is. But basically, what you're doing is you're linking your name, right? And this is where if you're doing a blog post, it might say by, you know, John Doe. And you'll put that John Doe, and you'll see it on our blog post. If you go take a look at a blog post that I wrote, you'll see where it says Mercer, about Mercer. And that link, that Mercer, you can click on, and it actually links toward our About page. And that About page actually links back to my Google Plus profile which proves to Google that I am a real person and not some spammy robot that created this thing out of an article spinning software that spit out 600 million things about how to be better at SEO and threw them up on a blog because it can do that in a matter of seconds. And that, again, stuff like that used to work, but Google's way smarter. It's completely evolved. And that's just a way when you actually do this little uh, authorship, right? You can do this authorship with, again, with WordPress, there are plugins that do this, they are fantastic. Um, in fact, that's actually the one that we're using is a, is a plugin on our site. You can go take a look at it. But if you go through and you do this, it's yet another signal that you're sending to Google that says, hey, I'm worth paying attention to. The information I'm saying is real. I'm a real person. And you can go ahead and rank me that much higher now above the person who didn't do that. And that's the thing is like this actually, especially if you're using that plugin, it actually happens automatically. So you never, once you set it up, you don't ever have to worry about it again. And every single post that you do is yet another way to show, hey, I've got some authority here. Now, that's also, by the way, if you ever go to search results and you see these little pictures. In fact, let's take a look here. I'm going to go back to the search results and see if I can't show you what I mean. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, you know what, let's do Austin because I'm just kind of curious now. I've been talking about it so much. Austin breakfast foods. Okay, let's see if there's anybody here. I'm not seeing it. I am seeing it here, though. Food truck. Okay. So there's food truck. Here's what I'm talking about. You see these little pictures right here. So there's seriouseats.com, 
little picture, little picture at thrillist.com. Now, how do you get those pictures there? It's because they actually connected their Google Plus profiles through the authorship tag so that Google knows that actually is coming from their Google Plus profile. Google knows what to put there. It knows that in this case, Meredith is somebody real and it will actually put her photo by those. And that of course gets some more clicks, even though they're not necessarily ranking as high. Okay. You can see that Romy Hunger is by far the number one here. But down here, this catches your eye, and this will ultimately lead to more clicks. If it leads to more clicks, it can possibly lead to more shares. And if I'm sharing the content, then they just start climbing the ranking higher and higher and higher. So that's, again, one thing to take a look at. Very important thing, Google authorship. Here's your seriously simple marketing hack. And remember, these are all about if you're kind of getting a little overwhelmed with all this different information, this is the one action step that you should really focus on is getting through this hack. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'd like you to go and find one of your existing blog posts and then take a look at it and determine, okay, what keyword phrase, what keyword or keyword phrase, and more than likely it's going to be a phrase, more than one keyword, but what keyword phrase should it be ranking for? Then you're going to go through and you're going to say, okay, have I incorporated that phrase in my H1 tag? That's the title. Remember that's the title box, name of the post or the name of the page. Then you're going to take a look and say, okay, is it my first paragraph? Do I have it in that very first paragraph? And do I have it at least one other time in the body, either in the middle or toward the end of that particular post? And then finally, you're going to make sure that that entire article reads well. So you're going to make sure you're going through it and you're proofreading it for simple stuff like typos and grammatical errors, because Google can sense those too. And a lot of those, there are something called article spinners out there. I mentioned that earlier in this video, article spinners are literally programs that are written to write. That's all they do. And they fake write articles. And if you've ever gone through some of these articles that are out there, a lot of them are written by article spinners, which are essentially robots and they have grammatical errors and they don't read completely normally. So you want to make sure that yours has a good flow to it. Make sure there aren't any typos or grammatical mistakes, because that would also be sort of a dead giveaway. So take a look at that stuff. The fourth one I'm going to add in here, and this is, we were debating whether or not to put it in here. I'm going to mention it here on this particular video. Um, but and it's a much longer video we're going to be doing a little bit later, but there is an incredible plugin. This is again, for those of you in WordPress, there's a plugin that a gentleman by the name of Yoast makes. I believe it's Yoast um, is how that's pronounced, but it's Yoast SEO plugin. And it's actually spelled Y O A S T. So the Yoast SEO plugin, an incredible plugin to help you with your WordPress SE. Oh, in addition to this particular information, it'll actually help you to measure and see if you're actually doing this or not. So it's really, really worth putting in there completely free. They do have a premium version, but the free one is amazing. Uh, so something worth taking a look at. I hope you found value in this particular video. As always, please visit us on the blog. If you don't happen to be watching this on the blog already, you can leave comments there, ask us questions, give it maybe advice that you have on helping others perfect their SEO. We would love to see you there and create a conversation. We look forward to reading your comments. And of course, if you feel this article is worth anything at all, please share it in Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, whatever you feel is the best way to do that. Thanks again for watching this particular video, and we'll see you on the next one.